So I'm Tom Smith, and uh, as Lowell mentioned, uh, I'm a graduate of the high school. I spent uh, five of the best years of my life here. Uh, I had a great time. It's good to be back. Before I start on RDC, I want to point out three quick fun facts. Uh, one is uh, I came to the high school so that I could grow up to be Rick Stafford. So uh, you'll have to ask him how I'm doing on that. He's, uh, <laughs> Two is, you know, Lowell Taylor, who had a previously distinguished career as an economist, labor economist, the member of the Council of Economic Advisors to the President. You might ask, why is he directing the Center for Economic Development? It's because he came to me and he said, Don, you guys in economic development are so cool. How could I be cool like you? <laughs> that is true. And I said, well, you know, direct the CED. And so uh, that's how that happened. And the third fun fact is, uh, Rob and Dennis have many open jobs. I have the private cell phone numbers. I'll give them to you. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's great to be back at the high school, this time from the seat of RIDC's uh, presidency. RIDC is a complicated organization with a simple mission. We do real estate in the public interest. So uh, we're celebrating our 55, 55th year of existence. We were a creation of the Allegheny Conference, and uh, our goal really is to make sure that the region has sufficient real estate to capture the existing and emerging economic opportunities that present themselves. So uh, in its early days, that meant suburban Greenfield parks. So the office parks in O'Hara, Cranberry, and Park West were RNEC creations, and created really the first parks of that type in the region uh, for those types of companies. Uh, next phase of our existence, which continues to today, was really focused on brownfields. So we own uh, five major brownfield sites, three in the Mon Valley, in McKeesport and Duquesne, former uh, U.S. Steel mill sites uh, in uh, what the rest of the world calls Turtle Creek, but uh, we all know it's Turtle Creek, uh, is uh, the Keystone Commons, uh, the largest brownfield redevelopment site in the history of Pennsylvania, uh, if not the US. And uh, then uh, two sites that are near and dear to things that are going on on campus, uh, the Hazelwood site, in, uh, owned by the Omaha Partnership, which we have the general partner for, and also Lawrenceville, the Lawrenceville Technology Center, where there's a great upswing of activity, primarily with university-related startups. So uh, we uh, have a major brownfields play. All told, we are a private, not-for-profit organization that holds about six million square feet of real estate and a couple thousand of acres of land for development. And our goal is to fill the niches that the private market doesn't fill. So it's hard for the private sector to buy a steel mill site that's abandoned and hold it for 25 years as we have, gradually renovating it, reclaiming it, returning it to uh, an environmentally useful condition and make a lot of money doing that. So uh, we do that as a, uh, a not-for-profit and uh, have converted some of those formerly unusable sites into usable land again. Interesting fact about RIDC is uh, unlike most nonprofits, we pay real estate taxes. So this year we'll pay four and a half million dollars of real estate tax to the region, supporting the municipalities in which we're doing our economic development activities. Some of our uh, cooler and more noteworthy buildings and, and actually, probably the, the project that convinced me that RADC was a job I would enjoy and one that was worth taking was uh, the Collaborative Innovation Center, right adjacent to this building. That's actually a building we own and developed on behalf of the university, and now uh, is home to Google, Intel, Apple, and uh, uh, Scilab, and a number of other important activities for the region. But for me, that really brought home the intersection of how real estate and space, the built environment, facilitates economic development, and that's really what RADC's mission is. Uh, we also have Penn Garrison downtown, which is the first loft housing conversion downtown. And uh, you may know the Bakery Square as a, an emerging, exciting new development, but when it was the Nabisco Bakery, uh, we owned it then. So uh, we really get to see a lot of the interesting properties. And I think the great thing for me is that uh, we now have uh, guys like Rob and Dennis running the city and the county, who are tremendous partners. Uh, we're really lucky to have them in the region, and uh, we work very closely with them, with Lisa and the efforts on the riverfronts, uh, with Ellen and the neighborhoods. And so this is a great position for, for me to be able to apply all that high school uh, learning to uh, real world applications here, part of some of our most important organizations. All right, thank you. And, and last but not least. Um, my name is Jim Jewett, and I'm with the uh, Pittsburgh Life Sciences Greenhouse. And, uh, kind of late to the panel this evening, uh, so I apologize to my, uh, my boss had a family illness that he had to take care of. So I thought for a moment, how do I get a sense of context of how I communicate to you all? And I quickly went to the uh, economic development site for our state and said, well, how do I fit in? And, you know, they have four really areas that they focus on, business assistance, community development, you know, technology investment, and national business. 
I think as you listen to all of us, you can start placing us underneath some of those blocks. In the case of uh, technology investment, which is what, what, what I focus on, the state also has a kind of focus there. We focus on manufacturing, energy, agriculture, life sciences, and information technology. So for me specifically, uh, we focus on life sciences. And if you think of venture capital, uh, venture capital, probably 80% of venture capital comes between life sciences and information technology, which is Heinz College in and of itself, isn't it? And so when you think of that, um, you appreciate that uh, really innovation is, is really an information management process. And perhaps people don't know this, but incubation, uh, which you can also say is an incubator, started in 1957 outside of New York. But the first state to institutionalize it was actually Pennsylvania, the Ben Franklin system. And in that time, we've seen great numbers with uh, incubation, businesses surviving 10-year rates in the high 80s compared to businesses that would survive 44% you know, after three years. And uh, the state took it to the next level, probably around the year 2000, when they recognized that targeted incubators uh, have even better results than general incubators. And so the digital greenhouses and the life sciences greenhouses were formed, and there's been great success. So our goal simply as a life science organization is what we want to do is launch companies and be relevant in life sciences. And so the question is, what, what is relevance, and, and how do you know you can win? And so, uh, you know, winning starts with having innovation sources. And so if you take all the National Institute of Health money that comes into this area, southwestern Pennsylvania, and you pretended that you were a state, then you'd be number 12 in the nation. I don't think you know that. So we have that innovation. We start with that innovation. And the next challenge for us was how do we align capital sources and innovation sources? And so when the Greenhouse was founded, it had two components of it. We have amazing foundations here. So we got roughly $100 million to start with, of which $70 million was to go to the universities um, through the greenhouse to make sure that the innovation sources were linking to the capital sources. And uh, uh, one of the things that weren't mentioned to Don was part of that. Don was one of our uh, previous CEOs of the greenhouse. So that was our step one. The second step was how do we get money into the region and work on the process of making companies. And so for us, uh, we decided that there were really four things that we were going to focus on capital, people, connectivity, and space. And uh, space for us is, is, is less important than someone else can provide it. But one of the challenges in life science is you have some pretty expensive facilities that you need, so it is something that we do focus on. Uh, but the recognition of uh, our first CEO, Dennis Shablonski, was that uh, in life sciences particularly, um, it is one of the most, uh, next to the nuclear regulatory agency, one of the most um, regulated marketplaces. And a lot of this regulation is, is not documented, and so it takes experience. And when you think of venture capital, one of the things that venture capital does is they do not invent and invest in uh, learning experiences. They want people that have navigated it before. And think of that. I mean, if you think of Christopher Columbus for a minute, do you want to have got, just get your pilot's license and go find America, or do you need someone who's got lots of experience and has that ability to, to be you know, intuitive? And so um, the Pittsburgh Life Sciences Greenhouse started out by taking a lot of time investing in an executive and residence program, people. And in that time, we brought over 30 executives uh, into the region. Um, but we find those executives do something that's more important than putting money into the companies. It's a connectivity to their exit sources. So our executives have relationships with Johnson & Johnson and other companies that would buy them, which is the whole point of the startup business. And so people have become important, connectivity has become important. And one of the uh, challenges, uh, hopefully we're going to have a, Dr. Paul Pongo and I hopefully are going to have a paper published on this shortly, but you know, they, they call it the chasm in, in startup world. You know, you, it's very hard to get that first million and a half to get to a fundable milestone where people will invest in it. So capital is critical to get that going, and so we take higher risks than most people would. And so you step back and you say, okay, well, that's your strategy. That's your uh, components of your strategy. What are you targeting? And so we're targeting to be around 2014, about 1.5 to 2% of uh, life science venture capital in this country. And it doesn't sound like a lot. But we said, well, what can make us relevant? And when you appreciate that Massachusetts, California, and New York are 51% of, of venture capital to begin with, particularly in life sciences, you realize that 1.5% puts us on the map. So in that time, and since 2000, we've invested in roughly 60 companies. I put about 15 million in. Uh, they've attracted over uh, 400 million in uh, additional equity capital. We've had a couple of exits that have happened. We've started to have those exits. The community is starting to fill up. And uh, if we go back to our sources of innovation, when we first started, I would say probably down we're 90% out of the universities. 
And I would say now we're about 70%, which means that entrepreneurialism is starting to spread, and so that is an issue. 